So in honor of my new series, Young Catholic Couples, I thought we would take a step back and look at what is really the beauty of sex. And just like any clickbait title, it will surprise you. Before we start on anything, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And once you are subscribed, check out my video series, Young Catholic Couples. The next episode and the final episode will be airing this Monday at 8 a.m. So check that out and check out Nate and Sarah and Anthony and Annie talk about their faith lives as young Catholic couples. It's kind of a self-explanatory title. They talk about what it means to be a young Catholic couple. But in honor of that, I thought we would look at one thing that's really important in relationships, not just in Catholic, well, not generally in Catholics, because Catholics don't have sex before marriage. But for a lot of people, sex is a huge deal for marriage. So a lot of Catholics find themselves in the position where they really need to be able to explain the beauty of marriage from a religious theological standpoint, and nobody is really explaining this well. However, I am currently reading Theology of the Body as one of my honors classes here at the Abbey, and I thought I would tell you guys something I learned from Theology of the Body. Do you know what Theology of the Body is? Okay, recap. Theology of the Body is a book that Pope John Paul II wrote. Well, technically it's not a book. Technically it's actually a series of his homilies that he gave, papal addresses technically. So it's a series of Pope John Paul II's papal addresses concerning humanity. Now they're not just sexuality, it's all about what does it mean to be a person. It's the theology of the body, of the person. So it goes into everything really, from creation to death. It goes into who are you as a person. That's what it answers. Highly recommend reading it. But anyways, I was reading Theology of the Body and there's a really interesting section where they talk about Genesis that I thought you guys would love to hear about. So here's how it works. Ready? I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting up because I'm excited to scoot in here. That's out. Okay, now that we're up close, I'll explain this. See, Adam in the beginning of creation. Pop, we have Adam right here. Adam had multiple parts to his person. He had body, he had soul, he had masculinity, and he had femininity. Now, when he was split up and to make Eve, God took away the feminine part of Adam, all right? And that's the whole, he took away a part of who Adam was as whole. And he made Eve body and soul because those aren't kind of necessary. You need a body and the soul cannot be separated from the body. And then he gave her femininity. So then Adam was left as a man with body, soul, and masculinity, and Eve had body, soul, and femininity. So what does that mean? That means that they were both missing a key part of who they were as people. Okay, so this is where it gets really cool because think about it, like when Jesus said, Jesus, when Jesus said that two shall cling to each other and become one flesh, it doesn't just mean like sex because the bodies are now close. It means that the two shall become one in that they now have the body, the soul, the masculine, the femininity, all in one personification of these two people. When they are both connected through sex, specifically in a marital relation, that is when they are actually able to be the fullness of themselves. And that's just really cool because they're able to fill and go back to that original Adam. Not like Adam, there was 2.0 Adam, but like the original version of Adam when he was body, soul, masculine, and femininity. When you combine the two bodies, the two souls, and the masculinity and femininity, you're back to that moment. That moment in the Garden of Eden. Now, what else happened to the Garden of Eden? Creation. This is why sex is the only thing that is capable naturally of creating a child. Because to be able to go back to that moment through sex, to the moment of the Garden of Eden where God was creating everything, and have something that is masculine, feminine, body and soul, that is the only way to create a child. And that's what's so beautiful about sex is that you are literally going back in that moment to the moment of creation and saying, we shall create, we shall partake in a creation with God of a being. And that's why like sex is so beautiful and should really be reserved for marriage because when you have that marital relationship and you can completely maintain for that child, that is when you are able to not just have this gift from God, and that's what people always say, children are a gift from God, now that I'm thinking about it. But you not only have this gift from God, you also have the ability to nurture this gift of God, to make it better 
and then have it be creating another gift of God. And that sounds really weird. It's like, oh, God just created humans to give like gifts. No, it's not a gift to God. God is, doesn't need any gifts because he's a perfect being. What need gifts is us. We are the only things that need gifts. And like, that's why we have to pray is because it's not because God gets anything, but it, because it helps us. It's the same with sex and with sparing a child. Because to be able to fulfill your purpose as like a mother or a father, you of course have to have a child. Otherwise you're not a mother or a father. So in that moment, when the two persons combine, it's not just, oh, they cling to one flesh. No, instead they're actually becoming the full person, the original person of Adam. And it's not to say they're actually Adam like from the Old Testament, but like that's what they are in that moment. They are Adam and Eve, but is the original Adam. And if that's not beautiful, I don't know what is. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. It is kind of late and I'm kind of babbling a little bit, but I thought that was a really interesting point. I thought you guys would like it as well. That's why we did this, because y'all would probably like it, hopefully. If you like it, leave a comment down below what you thought about this idea. If you disagree, if you agree. I mean, you can disagree with John Paul too. You'll probably be wrong, but you can if you want to. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe and check out the playlist of Young Catholic Couples should be popping up right after I say goodbye. So thank you everybody so much for watching. And as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be. Rise up and live.